Peter Wold, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. How are you doing? Pretty good. Peter, uh, one question uh, right off the bat. Is that a victory for the defense that a George Floyd 2019 arrest can be introduced? Uh, for the purposes that it can be uh, introduced, it's, it's very important. You bet. Oh, okay. And do you think the trial should have been delayed or moved? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just let me state this. I've, I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there was ever a case in the history of Minnesota that deserved a change of venue, uh, this one did. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I, uh, yeah, you know, the assumption that people in, uh, Crookston or Marshall or, or other places are aware of this is certainly true, but to have it on the, um, uh, front page of the Metro or front page of the daily, uh, newspaper, uh, doesn't happen there. Uh, right. I doubt their mayor has come out and um, professed uh, that uh, Mr. Chauvin is guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's it's a different story. I mean, you know, the taxpayers of you know those Marshall, Moorhead, Crookston, uh, those cities uh, uh, didn't see their city and tax dollars, however it's paid, um, uh, um, go out because uh, their city council determined uh, they were liable. And of course, by being liable, it's uh, implicit uh, that the death was caused by uh, the, their agent, the police. So... I, I, uh, yeah, it, it's, I think it was a case ripe for a change of venue. I think uh, that would have been uh, more fair to uh, Chauvin, but uh, uh, obviously the fact that they've spent two weeks and have, uh, I don't know if it's 13 jurors or if they have them all now. Yeah, they're at uh, 13. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you know. The, the the judge Gato, who well, has found, I, I saw the uh, story this morning. Um, he found uh, that they had fair and impartial jurors. So if you have fair and impartial jurors, I guess it doesn't matter where you are at. But um, you, you know, certainly uh, the optics of yeah, uh, you know, the bad press, the bad. Uh, and, and, you know, announcing a settlement during the process of a criminal case just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I've never seen it happen before this time. So, Why do you think it uh, happened? Why do you think it happened the way it did? They're, they're explaining today that the reason uh, they're giving us for uh, announcing the settlement is they feared that that offer would not be on the table in the future, meaning what? They feared it might even be yeah. more than $27 million? Uh, well, how, how, that, I, I, mean, I, I don't get that. I'm not a civil attorney. But if you have a settlement that you've agreed upon uh, and all parties sign off on it with their signatures, uh, it's done. Right. Uh, and there's no reason uh, you can't just, I, I mean, and what, what, what are, I, 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 don't, I don't know the details. I hear that it's uh, not going to be finalized for a period of time. If it's not going to be finalized for a period of time, what was the exigency in uh, uh, disclosing it? Um, because what is your What is your opinion on that? Why do you think it was disclosed? I'm. I'm I, I. Yeah. You know. Uh, you, you can be cynical and say um, it's uh, because they wanted to make a point, yep. uh, and it was maybe it was negotiated. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that was uh, part of the deal. We won't take 30 if you give us 27 and we announce it today. Who knows? I, I, that, that's, yeah, you know, that's speculation and nothing more. But uh, I, I don't see uh, 
uh, uh, legal reason or uh, uh, or it to need to be uh, uh, announced at that time, and it certainly has an impact on on jurors as as we found out this week when the ones that were called were brought back and other ones questioned um, indicated it meant something to them. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, I uh, one juror said. If it had been two thousand bucks, it would have been one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when it's twenty-seven million, uh, that's a statement, and mm-hmm. it is a statement. So, in your career, uh, I, I'm sensing that you've never. If you take all of the factors together, the uh, the press, the uh, uh, the security fencing, the announcement of the of the settlement, have you are you finding this one of the most unique situations you've seen? Oh, for sure, yeah, for sure, yeah. There, there's no doubt. It's a unique situation uh, in the in the history of of criminal trials. I mean, yeah. I mean, they have it have it live streamed around the world. Right. Uh, everybody, uh, yeah. It, it's 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 one of a kind. I have a question. It's rookie here um, regarding selection of jurors. To find someone, and I, I really am struggling with this, to find someone that does not know anything about this or knows very little about this event, this world international event, how, how do I say this nicely? It seems like they would be so out of touch that you might not want to rely on them to, to have an opinion. Do you do you, under, do you kind of understand what I'm saying? Oh oh oh, uh, absolutely. I, I uh, uh, and and that that happens uh, in 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 many trials that have uh, even a modicum of uh, of uh, publicity about them. There will be. I mean, there's jurors out there that just don't read the paper. There's jurors out there that don't watch the news. Uh, and unfortunately for uh, you guys, there's you know, a bunch of jurors that don't listen to podcasts. But, <laughs> you got that. Well, right. damn it, we have to change that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but that's just that, that's true in every case in every community. And you you as a lawyer, you think you know is my case better with somebody that knows nothing about this and doesn't pay attention. Uh, and, and sometimes you might have a case where, where that's a good thing. On the other hand, uh, if you're looking for a well-informed, uh, sophisticated juror, uh, someone that doesn't know anything about that case uh, ain't that guy, you know, right. or woman. Uh, I have a question, actually two questions. Do you believe the live streaming is a good thing, and do you buy into the argument that the live stream might uh, affect the safety of both the witnesses and the jurors. What are your thoughts, your feelings, and opinion on that? Well, I I, I, I don't object to live streaming. I mean, it, this is it's a public trial. That's what uh, that's what defendants and parties are guaranteed. This is a public trial, and. Uh, I, I think, yeah, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been there. I've been in that courtroom. Uh, mm-hmm. There's, I, you know, as it stands right now, two members of the press are the only people in the gallery, uh, and there's not room for anyone else. Yeah, you know, we did when we did the Nor trial. Uh, they had, I think, two additional courtrooms where the trial was live streamed. Uh, and you know we had press from Australia and and lots of it from around the country. Uh, here, there's it's that's just not enough. Uh, I mean, and, and and the security they're trying to provide in the courthouse and, and so forth. It, it it probably was the only answer here to make that a public trial to secure the space for. Um, uh, jurors and parties coming in and witnesses that have to come in. Uh, you, you, you know, does it, does it make it more risky 
you know, it shouldn't for the jurors. I mean, their their names are going to be withheld for a good period of time. Uh, they're not going to be seen live. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you, uh, I mean, there's ways to find out who they are, I suppose, if you walk who drives into the courthouse uh, every day for four weeks, you can do some investigative work. But that, that's that's not that's not likely. I mean, as far as witnesses goes, uh, will it be put them in danger? Uh, I'm, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, mm-hmm. if they'd be in danger because they're on TV, they're, they'd be in danger if uh, there was uh, a gallery in the courtroom or in other courtrooms watching it on that's that's what you're stuck with in a trial um, and it, it I, I, I guarantee you there's witnesses that uh, uh, are reluctant to be a part of this don't want to be a part of it but um, uh, they don't have a lot to say about that once they're subpoenaed and uh, the judge backs up the subpoena. So, uh, I, you, you know, I buy it, but um, that's that's a minor factor. Peter, are there time limits on a criminal trial? In other words, or are they like baseball? They'll just, they're over when they're over. They're over when they're over. Okay, they're so. The yeah. jury can be out for two months. Right. Uh, uh, you know, at some point. <laughs> Uh, judge is going to say, "Okay, you say you're deadlocked. I guess you are." Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, you know, you you can look at the investment in uh, in this case, um, and um, it's it's uh, there's certainly no uh, as long as relevant evidence is being presented by either side, uh, the evidence will go on as long as it takes. Um, and a jury will be free to deliver to deliberate as long as they um, uh, feel they can uh, keep talking and and change minds. Peter, with this incessant desire to have full transparency, and as you mentioned, with some of the jurors not feeling comfortable being on it and so forth, do you believe that it's possible that he can get a fair trial? It, it's it's. It's very challenging, um, and I think um, I, you know I've watched Eric Nelson's approach to speaking with jurors. He's he's been, I mean, he's been even keel. He, uh, he is responsive uh, to them. I think he has uh, shows empathy to them and their concerns. Um, that that's. That's just one step, though. But I, I mean, yeah, you know, you see jurors walking in, and there's um, cops and National Guard and razor wire and things uh, uh, protecting people and uh, and the property. Uh, you know, all of them, as you heard during the jury selection, or ninety five percent of them are certainly aware of uh, what happened last summer, uh, and. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly not, um, not a secret that a, an acquittal would, uh, be much more dangerous to property in the city of Minneapolis than a conviction would be. That's, I mean, I, mean, I think that's a common sense, uh, uh, implication that's, that they'd have to, have to appreciate. Uh, so that's, that's not fair. Um, and I, I guess, I, I mean, the 27 million bucks paid out in advance, the city, uh, basically with, uh, city council and, uh, mayors and governors and other people all, uh, um, uh, basically pronouncing guilt before a trial even happens right. certainly doesn't, um, doesn't, uh, uh, bold well for the presumption of innocence, which is is always a uh, a tough standard to to get a jury to embrace. So could that lead to an appeal and a successful appeal? Or will am I going down the wrong road there? 
I think you're well, premature. Yeah, 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 I mean, there's, there's got to be a conviction before there's an appeal, but uh, there are, I mean, uh, as in, in many cases, but particularly this one, uh, appellate issues uh, continue to uh, to mount. I mean, there's, there's uh, I'm sure uh, uh, all defendants have a, a list of them uh, already. And um, certainly the, the, the change of venue issue will be an appellate issue if there's a conviction. The uh, uh, actions by uh, governmental authorities that we've already gone over that, uh, I mean, that, that should know uh, the problems with taking positions and making announcements and uh, settling civil cases and things like that now um, are, 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 are shameful. And uh, uh, so, yeah, there, there's, there's appellate issues and the fair trial issue will, would be one of them. Peter, uh, Go ahead, uh, throughout the trial, may we may we uh, implore you to join us occasionally? Oh no, I'd be happy to. Sure, uh, we'd appreciate Wonderful. it very much. Do you have yeah. a, one more, Rook? I just I have a real quick question. In the defense, in the defense huddle, when they huddle together and say, "What is their ultimate goal?" Yes, they want a, a, an acquittal, of course, but. Most likely, that's not going to happen. What What do you think their goal is um, at the end result of this trial? That wasn't very quick, by the way. Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, no, I, I, I disagree. Their their end result is absolutely a hundred uh, percent acquittal. That's, yeah. that's their huddle. I, I don't know if you mean the lawyers for the four different parties or the. Or Chauvin and uh, Eric Nelson and his associate that's behind him, uh, you know, they're, they 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 need to consult. You you do that always consult with your client to at least let him give his perspective on whether he wants this juror or not. Not that as a lawyer you oh would always agree with that, but yeah, you know, you'll you'll notice after Nelson questions every juror, he'll go back and check with his associate and Chauvin and then Lane in and say, you know, we got X amount of strikes left. We got these problems coming up. Can we afford to take one here? You know. Oh, fascinating. It gives us oh. more to watch for. Yeah. Peter, thank yeah. you very, very much for your time and yeah. we'll 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 definitely stay in touch. Thank you. Sounds good. My pleasure. Thanks right, guys. Thank Bye. you. Peter Wold who was a wonderful team Joe. That, Part of, the team that, part of the team that represented Muhammad Noor, and uh, he's had many, 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 probably more high-profile cases in the Twin Cities than he would like. But uh, um, I learned a lot. That was very yeah. fascinating. Thank you.